And washing waste water. A lot of water. Please. Kids need clothes that fit right to feel comfortable. <laughs> what do y'all do when you can't get candy? Well, you shouldn't because of the coin story. Welcome to Leahona Light. <laughs> Guys, I'm back. And of course, we are covering 2nd Nephi, chapter 15. And what a bit of time, because I'm going to tell you something, guys. I see the pulse of what's going on in this nation. And it's sad. We could do 14 and 15, but I think. For the sake of time and what I'm sensing, we need to do verse 15. We need to do 2 Nephi 15, which is really a transliteration of Isaiah chapter 5. Okay? And of course, it begins with the analogy of the vineyard. But now we will go ahead and let's start with verse uh, 7. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment. And behold, a, press, a pressure for righteousness, but behold, a crime. Okay, this is, verse 8 is the beginning of the warnings. Woe well unto them that join house to house, till there can be no place that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. And then verse 9. In mine ears said the Lord of hosts of a truth, and many houses shall be desolate. And great and fair cities without habitation. Okay? Now, we're going to do 11 and 12. Woe unto them that riseth early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, that continue until night, and wine inflame them. Verse 12. And the harp and the vow, the tabard and pipe, and wine are in their feasts, but they regard not the work of the Lord, neither consider the operation of his hands. I want you to think about this. What's going on in this in this world, in particular in this country? And, and, and verse fourteen makes it clear. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory and their uh, multitude and their pomp, and he that rejoices shall descend into it. I think what that has to do with a lot with is, is a national arrogance, which is something that I think that we're, we're dealing with uh, right now. Now, I'm not going to... I'm not going to get involved in the political thing, but I think it's pretty obvious how these go. Here's, here's another warning from that same chapter, verse 18. 
Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity, and sin as it were with a cart rope. Verse 19, that say, Let him make speed, hasten his work, that we may see it, and let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw nigh and come, that we may know it. Now, doesn't that sound like the cry of this new atheism that we have? Prove it. Prove it. And I gotta say, it's sad. You know? And I think over the years, there have also been some people who proclaim to be Christians who be caught up in there. You can't proclaim yourself a Christian in one breath and sit there and doubt the goodness of God in another. I mean, come on. Hell enlarges itself for things like that. Verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Now I gotta say, that's quite a, 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 a that's quite an indictment right there. That's what's going on. It was the uh, abortion issue, and also this this debate about the nature of of marriage. I have to be honest with you. I sat there over the past five years and had discussions with my mother. And she goes, she says, James, sometimes I wonder if God just doesn't just get sick of what's going on in this world. I'm sure he does. Look at the warnings of Isaiah that's in the Bible and, and retranslated in the Americas for the, for the Book of Mormon. Look at those warnings. Well, into them to join house to house, you know, the communistic lifestyle. Woe unto them that rise early in the morning and continue into night until wine inflamed them. Alcoholism. Woe unto them that, that uh, draw iniquity towards vanity and sin as it were over the collar rope. That say, you know, just prove it to us. You know, that's, that's another problem. And woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Hedonism. You know, and I had hope that many of us Gen Xers would rise up and say no more. And some of us have. Some of us have. Don't get me wrong. There, many, many of us have. But I don't think it's been enough. I don't think it's been enough to really fan a, a, a flame of restoration. And that's why we have this prophetic warning. I hope you enjoyed listening to me a whole life. If you like what you hear, please subscribe. Become a part of the We Got Home Light family. This is Jimmy Hendrix saying until next time. Remember who you are. Read your scriptures. Take care. And God bless you. See you Friday night.